Hi and welcome to a new episode of my channel. Today I'm gonna talk about uh, Armaton Marmot. I wanna talk about my build, what I like on the frame, what I don't like on the frame, and all the components I used, including the action cam and all the other stuff. First, let's talk about the frame itself. The reason or the main reason why I bought this frame is because the bottom plate is a unibody frame. I really like unibody solutions because you don't need that much screws to build up your frame and it's a super rigid solution and it's really uh, clean and simple build. And Armaton Marmot has uh, something special at the front, what I really like. The most important thing for me is that you have the front end, the, the head, the cage of the FPV cam, which also holds the action cam. You can adjust the angle, so you have on both sides of the cage, you have three screws, which you can just a little bit loosen, and then you can uh, move the angle of the whole cage and if you move the angle you're gonna move the angle of your FPV cam and at the same time you move the angle of your GoPro so when you set both cams to the same angle you can change the angle of the cage and you will have always the same angle on the GoPro and on your FPV lens that's a really big plus what I really like on this frame there was a surprise when I start building the frame. I always measure all the parts and check if they fit well. And one big surprise was on this titanium part here. This is the spacer which makes the space between the bottom plate and the top plate and also fixes the cage on the frame. And what I figured out is there are two things. One thing is that this part doesn't really fit well on the bottom plate. If you put on this titanium plate there is around 0.3 millimeters of play up and down on the bottom carbon plate so I had to use some 0.3 millimeter spacers to make the, this part fit really well on the bottom plate. What you can also do is really tighten up these screws to push the titan part together and to, to, to squeeze the, the bottom plate but in my opinion that's no good solution because the screw is stressed in this case and it's a titanium part so to change the shape of the titanium part you have to really tighten up your screw like hell and that's not good for the screw that's not good for the titanium part so I decided to go with uh, 0.3 millimeter shims to fix this problem. I'm a little bit disappointed about this because this is a frame which is over $100 and in my opinion for over $100 you can expect a really precisely built frame. Every part has to fit perfect to each other and this is not what you get here. This is just this single part, but in my opinion, every single part has to fit perfect if you have to pay more than $100 for a frame. The second uh, thing is also uh, an issue about this part here, the same spacer. I just checked the height of the aluminum space you have in the rear and the titanium space you have in the front. And this around this 0.3 millimeters, which you need to shim your spacer to, to get no play between the, the, the titanium part and your bottom plate. The same difference you have in height of this aluminium part in comparison to the spacer. The spacer is around 0.3 millimeters lower than the aluminium spacer. So that means your your top plate looks around 0.3 millimeters down to the front. This is no big deal, but same issue as before. In my opinion, if you pay that much money, you can expect a frame which fits perfect, and it doesn't. 
The second solution I don't like on the frame is the way they expect to mount the battery on top of the frame. The position is okay, but you get this foam which you should place on top of your frame to mount the battery. But the problem is that this is a simple piece of foam. No Uma grip, no sticky pad from Banggood or whatever. And what you can see is that your battery has absolutely no grip on this foam. And the same foam is used originally on the top plate of the cage to fix your GoPro session or whatever you want to fix with your Velcro. And what can happen if you crash in the, and your battery isn't fixed well on the top of your frame, the battery hits right into your GoPro, which is not good for your battery, which is not good for your GoPro. So I don't understand why they don't put some Uma grip or something similar, including in the frame kit. What I use is some Banggood sticky pad and when you mount the battery on it, the battery is fixed with no Velcro and like this, if you use two Velcros like it, it's meant to be on this frame, the battery sits really tight on the frame and it can't go anywhere no matter if you crash or do hard maneuvers and tricks and whatever. So Armaton Quartz please change this thing to something which is more useful for us pilots. Then we have a third issue on the frame, the top plate which comes with the kit uh, is a carbon plate on top of the cage. The carbon plate has a shape that your uh, GoPro, if you use a 3D printed uh, mount like I use it for the GoPro 7, doesn't fit well. So it means your uh, camera or your mount can move around on this uh, carbon plate which is which comes with the kit so i had to build up a custom made carbon plate uh, made out of one millimeter carbon which has but the front and the back a straight line so it really fits the 3d printed part very well and it keeps it in place and you don't have to do strange things to fix the 3d printed part well and especially this one for the GoPro 7 was really loose on the original carbon plate. So it was an uh, important thing to change the original carbon plate to the custom made carbon plate, what I did for this frame. And then let's go to the components. Uh, first, let's have a look at the FPV cam. It's a run cam micro eagle. I use what I had to do is because it's not built for micro cams the, the original mount you can see here is made for mini size cams and the micro size cam like I use it is, is not wide enough to fit these parts here so I had to also use some shims to, to fit it and because of the tiny size of the cam I also had to flip around the mount you can see here normally it has the shape it goes from downside to the upside like like this the curve makes like this and now it makes the curve like this and I'm gonna use the hole uh, which is not really meant to mount the camera but like this on the on this long hole if you go on the upper side and you flip around the, this, this aluminium part 180 degrees you have the perfect fit for your micro eagle cam it's really perfectly set in deep into the frame so if you crash your lens is extremely well protected and at the same time i was really surprised that you have absolutely no frame or no cage parts on your fpv uh, footage so the live footage on your goggle is clean no uh, titanium parts of the frame in your picture and as you can see the lens is really well protected behind the titanium parts of the fpv camera cage as a vtx i use the ishin 
801 VTX, which has maximum output power of 600 milliwatts. You can set up between 0.01 milliwatts up to the 600 milliwatts in different steps. I'm really happy with this Ishin solutions. They work great. And I use a Foxier uh, right-handed circular polarized antenna. Um, which give me a very good range of over one kilometer with my FatShark HDO and the rapid fire module. Then let's have a look at the motors and the props. The motors are from DYS. It's these are away with uh, 2600 kV. These are $10 motors which work great in my opinion and it's not really necessary to spend more money for a motor than for these. The props are the HQ uh, 5 to 4.3 to 3 props. They work fantastic, they are pretty rigged and what I really like on them is that they almost don't break, they just bend but they don't break because I don't like to break props and uh, leave the, the broken parts of the props out in the field, in the, out in the nature, so I can get back the whole prop even if it's bent hard or whatever, but the blades do not break off the center of the prop and like this I have no garbage out in the nature. I have motor direction inverted. Uh, just because uh, to avoid dirt in my FPV lens. If you want to have a look uh, about the setup, how to invert motors on Betaflight, you can find the link in this video above here. For FC and ESC, I use the FC from DIS. It's the F4 V2 Pro Edition and as uh, ESC I use the Dahl RC engine 45 amp version these components work really great and one reason is that I use these there are everywhere are solder pads to uh, connect the signal wires from the FC to the ESC I really don't like connectors because I had crashes because of bad connectors on the FC and on the ESC so I really decided to go always with uh, soldered signal wires from the FC to the ESC and with these two components it's no problem to solder all the cables you connect uh, the FC and the ESC together. One little modification I did here is I used a small uh, Lexan or polycarbonate plate just to keep down all the cables on the FC so it makes it easier to go between the top plate and the FC with your velcro. So like this you don't push and pull around your cables it fits really well no issues with any cables they are really well placed like this and they stay in place where they should. As RC receiver you almost can see it now but it's it's a Futaba R2001 SP receiver it's okay in size it's not extremely small but it's okay for this size of frames and I used some uh, cable ties to do the antenna installation in the way you can see it like this. I like this way because it's almost impossible to get the antenna into your props and you have really good range because you have the antenna at the maximum height of the quad and you're also not close to the FPV antenna, everything is away from each other. That works great, it's a simple installation, it's also a low budget installation but a safe installation which also protects your uh, RC receiver antennas very well and that's the simple solution I did here. My current action cam is the GoPro 7 Black Edition and what I extremely like on this cam is hyper smooth. I'm not a pilot which flies extreme uh, freestyle tricks and things, it's more about cinematic and smooth stuff and with hyper smooth turned on you get really fantastic video quality and it's also another problem if you fly in windy conditions 
if you have a prop which is not perfect it has some hits or whatever or your motors had not the perfect bearings anymore all these issues you you can get during a day of flying around and some crashes you can fly on and you will have no problem to get really smooth footage out of this camera i know that it's not a cheap camera but if you can afford it it's really worth it because there's no more fiddling around with setups and trying to tune better flight as good as possible to get clean footage. This camera with HyperSmooth on does the job it has to do and it delivers really clean cinematic footage. Then uh, the 3D printed part I use 3D mount for the GoPro. The reason why I chose this version is that it simply protects the camera extremely well. It's really in front of the lens you have some protection, you have very good protection around the front display and the rear side is completely closed. This is for sure not the lightest version of your GoPro mount but it protects your big touch screen on the back side, it protects your lens as good as possible and it protects also your front display as good as possible. This is the reason why I decided to go with 3D printed mount like this. That's it for today. I hope you liked the video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Happy flying. Bye bye.